Okay, so <laughs> what's my point amongst all of this? We have Charles Morton first being married to Elizabeth Berkeley, and there's absolutely no record of a son being born, but there's one ancillary piece of information that um, was written down in a, in a note that appears in one of the archives that um, it was written in 1778 by actually by Elizabeth Pratt, and she mentions that, um, or actually, um, yeah, somewhere around that time, she mentions that um, she wants her son, want, Dr. Morton wants his son to, they're discussing what his career is going to be, and that's in 1779. And so if you, you know, you work your way back, you know, back to 1755, yeah, that's about 22 years later, but we also have some ancillary evidence from Charles Tatlow's uh, diary that also points to him being um, not that old, not, you know, not born so, not probably not born anywhere earlier than the late 1760s. Um, probably born around the, the, the 1760s. So that's in the Nottingham archives that I mentioned that. So just to let you know, we've eliminated Mary Berkeley as a possible candidate to be Charles Carr's mother, right? We've accepted Dr. Morton as being the father thus far of the evidence that we have. Um, and the evidence being the will in which Dr. Morton names Charles Carr as his son. But um, now we got Lady Berkeley and let's, uh, Lady Savile and let's, uh, Mary Pratt, and let's see um, what the evidence is here. So in 1767, when they married, Lady Savile was 61 years old, and uh, <coughs> her marriage to Dr. Morton was her third marriage. The first marriage was to uh, George Savile on December 19, 1722, when Dr. Charles Morton was six years old keep that in mind. Okay, so we, we, we've gone through that. And so now the third wife that's going to come up, which is going to be Elizabeth Pratt, um, seeing it looks, it appears that, well, that's got to be the only one that's left, right? And just in case I haven't covered this yet, uh, I think I have. But yeah, I did. I did the, the, the thing. Um, Okay, so Dr. Morton ended up living at Twickingham in the former home of Lady Elizabeth Montague. And she, she was a very interesting person, and she brought back the smallpox vaccine with her from Turkey. For whatever reason, she was in Turkey for a while. Don't know. And then um, <coughs> it was called the Montague House until Lady Savile and Dr. Morton moved in there, and then from thereafter it was called the Savile House. And even though Lady Savile was going to be divorced by George Savile, um, her whole life she liked to call herself Lady Savile. Um, she ended up, you know, she was going to be, it's age 61 in, in 1767, she's just too old to be the mother of Charles Carr Morton. But at around 1767 or close, it was around the time that Charles Carr, she was about 10 years too old to be a mother. I would think, and but Charles Carr, by other ancillary pieces of evidence, kind of slide slide him into place. Um, pretty much shows that he was probably born around a little bit earlier in this time, and this is after Mary Berkeley died. So did he have another wife? And that's one thing that I propose is possible. Now, Charles. Tatlow, who wrote a journal, which I'll go into some detail on, probably in a later presentation, disagrees with me. He's dead, can't argue, but basically what he said in his journal um, is that even though Dr. Morton had said that Charles Carr was basically a foundling adopted and not his natural son, um, Tatlow thought that it was in fact his son, and Liz Pratt was in fact the mother. And he seemed to believe that very steadfastly, even though, despite the fact of what Dr. Morton had told him. And looking at the evidence, I'm, I have some doubt. Okay, so let's go back down here. Okay, so continue on with what I've written. 
Dr. Morton's third known marriage was to Elizabeth Pratt, who's said to have been age 35 at the time. Um, and it's said to be at the age 35 at the time. Um, I don't, I've yet, I don't think I've yet to find an actual birth date for Elizabeth Pratt. And that's one of the problems I'm having. Um, the estimation is she's born around 1756. I don't know an exact birth date for her. Um, it is said that she was a near relation to Mary Pratt. In fact, lived in the same household, and that's probably how Dr. Morton was even introduced to her. And later on, when both Dr. Morton was getting older and less able to manage his own affairs, and Mary Pratt was less able to manage her affairs, uh, Elizabeth Pratt would do a lot of secretarial things for them, even respond to letters for Dr. Morton. I found one little interesting piece of evidence that hopefully I'll get to. It was an inquiry about some document that was damaged somehow, and some entry in some museum entrance, and there was a, resp a response signed E. Morton, but it was supposedly from Dr. Morton. But I digress. Okay. Now, Elizabeth Pratt was the daughter of Reverend Joseph Pratt and a near relation of Lady Savile. As such, she lived in the same household as Dr. Morton and, Mary, and his wife Mary Pratt from as early as January 6, 1778. Now, I'm going to stop for a second here. I'm going to complain about Wikipedia. This article I'm reading is the original article that I wrote. And what's happened is, is the article that I wrote about Dr. Charles Morton has just had the life sucked out of it. And so all these ancillary pieces of information, sometimes to know what a person's about, you have to know who they're involved with and what, who those other people are that are in their lives. And I think some of these details that I'm going over now have just been taken out of the, out of the entry. And they've, they've kind of selectively taken some things out. And they probably could, even, based on the logic they've used, to suck it dry they could probably even take even more till they have like a few sentences in there. But anyway, so the, my older version has a lot more personality than what's up there now. I know they're trying to do the right thing by it, and I know they tried to get rid of um, anything that wasn't directly focused on Dr. Charles Morton, but I think at the end of the day, they really um, depleted the quality of the article. And it's sometimes to get to know uh, a person you might want to know about what their descendants did a little bit too. It's not... Life isn't lived in isolation. You know, it's a very boring life. You know, my name is James Leone. I was born in a box and I died in the next year. And that's all you're going to have. Unless you have other people in your life, there's nothing to talk about. But I digress. Okay. <clears throat> Getting back to this. Dr. Morton, his wife, Mary. Okay, so she lived in the same household from as early as January 6, 1788. There's a little snippet. Um, from um, even though they married in um, on April 25th, 1791, this is Elizabeth Pratt, his third wife. Um, and I'll just make a quick comment. Elizabeth Pratt married Dr. Morton in 1791. And this is a month after Lady Savile died. Dr. Morton died in 1799, and in 1800, Charles Carr Morton was married to Charlotte Tatlow, and a year after that, the first child was born. So, if Charles Carr was born under conventional circumstances um, by Elizabeth Pratt via marriage, he would have been 10 years old when his first child was born and married at 9. That doesn't work. That's the third piece of evidence. So let's get back to this. Okay, so there was an announcement in the Scott Magazine and there's also that, that, that basically said that Elizabeth Pratt had lived with them for a number of years. Uh, the wedding announcement itself in Scott Magazine said that Elizabeth Pratt lived with Dr. Morton and Mary Pratt for a number of years. And then also it says <clears throat> there's a note from January 6, 1778 that states that note from Eliza Pratt sending Lady Savile's comment to Mr. Hewitt. Mr. Hewitt, that is one of her children's husbands. And that she'll be much obliged to him if he invites Dr. Morton to dine at Gro Grosvenor Street next Saturday. 
In another document in the Nottingham Archives, Elizabeth Pratt sits, writes, Dr. Morton intends putting him to Mr. Angelus to ride and fence, but he's not to go into the guards. Well, we're talking about his son, right? And so that was in 1778, and we're talking about what career this kid's going to have. That kind of points back maybe the 50s, maybe the 60s, who knows? If we assume he was 16, 18 years old in 1779, we would have him born anywhere from 1761 to 63, but uh, that was 76. One was uh, six years after Mary Berkeley died, if Collins Peerage is right, but four years uh, prior to his marriage to Lady Savile. So there may be something in between, and then Founding, Hosp Founding Hospital is also in between there, too. <laughs> and one of the cousins said that they thought I was trying to uh, take away the ancestry of Elizabeth Pratt from, um, from them. You know, she has some, Elizabeth Pratt does have some very interesting um, ancestors, including Audley Mervyn. Um, I'm not try, trying to do that. I'm just looking at the evidence. And there's going to be some more evidence to look at. I will go over um, Charles Tatlow's diary memoirs in just a bit. I'm going to stop. I don't want to lose this 